Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbit Tree Center and today we're going to talk about rabbits and those breeds that are heat tolerant. You know, some rabbits do better than others in hot climates and some have been bred specifically for that reason. So uh, we have all our fans hooked up today and it's a good thing. It's 87 degrees and I thought it would be a good day to talk about this. So I'm going to I'm gonna try to find a shady spot and, and talk about some of these breeds and some will be accessible, some may not be. Uh, but we'll talk at the very end of the video we'll list all the breeds that are that are heat tolerant and uh, if, you, if I don't happen to mention a breed that you know of please comment down below and let us know a breed that you know uh, that's that's good in hot climates so let's get into it here we go So if we're gonna talk about heat tolerant rabbits, we have to talk about Tamic rabbits. If you guys aren't familiar, Tamic rabbits, it's a rabbit that was developed by Texas A&M University Kingsville, and that's the acronym where they get Tamic. It's a mixture of several different breeds, but they started with 20 New Zealand does, seven New Zealand bucks. But then they had 20 composite does, seven composite bucks. I'll put up all the breeds that they used. They wanted to incorporate some of the other characteristics or strengths that these breeds had. So we'll talk about all these breeds a little bit, but we'll talk about five of the best. You know, we're gonna talk about a few more, but when it comes to Tamic rabbits, they were designed specifically for backyard meat productions in high heat tolerance. They have a shorter fur, they have longer ears, and this helps them control the ambient temperatures and control their, their body heat a little bit, or their body temperature a little bit better. They were also designed for high litters, you know, a good production. Any, any rabbit doe that had four kits or less, they were culled. So over time, they used all these different breeds and no one was ever allowed into the lab, the, 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 or the, the rabbitry. It was an 80 foot by 17 foot rabbitry that all these rabbits were developed in. I mean, they had to do uh, foot bath washes. They had, nobody was allowed to touch the rabbit until after they purchased it. Slowly but surely, these rabbits have made it out into the, the states and you know, they're actually available. You can find them on Craigslist or a social media sites, you know, that sort of thing. These rabbits were even fed a certain amount, the small rabbits, medium rabbits. I mean, it was a strict plan and um, it really, it was, it was a rabbitry that was run correctly and, and bred for favorable characteristics. It's pretty neat that the rabbits that they used to breed, we'll talk about those today. You know, now we won't talk about all of them because we've actually covered them in the five best meat rabbits. Uh, they're the five best meat rabbits for, for a reason, but. So again, this video covers rabbits that do really well in the heat. They may not necessarily cover rabbits that are the best meat rabbits, but we're gonna talk about the Belgian hare, okay? This is, this is a rabbit that was developed in the 18th century in Belgium, and it was crossbred with the wild European rabbit and in, in the 1900s, this rabbit was over 6,000 a week were, were imported into the United States, but they just couldn't develop it into a meat rabbit. So by, by 1902, this rabbit had already died out. It just resembles, it has a distinctive look. It looks just like uh, the, a wild rabbit, a cottontail rabbit. But that, that rabbit, that breed of rabbit does really well in the heat. It's got an arched back, and which probably allows it to cool. Another rabbit that does really well in the heat that is, was also shipped from Belgium, it was developed in the 1830s, is the Dutch rabbit, also known as a Hollander. It's got a very distinctive look. It's, it looks like it's got pants on. It's got black fur from the waist down, but it has white paws, and that's actually why the, the feet are white on Tamic rabbits because of the Dutch genetics. Before dwarf rabbits, the Dutch rabbits were the, the most popular rabbit, the rabbit. They're right around four to six pounds. Now these rabbits, um, they're developed in the 1830s and they were shipped every week from Belgium to the United States for the meat market. The biggest rabbit we'll mention today is a checkered giant. Now these rabbits, they come in two different colors, spotted blue or gray, spotted black, and they have a pointed nose, pointed ears, but their feet are white. They originated in France, they have an arched back and they do really well in the heat. One of the most different looking rabbits you'll ever see is the Harlequin rabbit. This is another rabbit that came out of France. It was first shown in 1887 in Paris. And this rabbit, it's full of color. It's like 
paint got spilt all over it. We're talking chocolate, lilac, blue, uh, black, white, orange, and there's two different Harlequins. There's a there's magpie or Japanese, and the magpie has the white, and the orange is the Japanese. These rabbits were actually used as meat in World War II. They're known as the clown or the gesture of the of the rabbit industry because of their their crazy look. So if we're gonna talk about the checkered giant and the harlequin, we have to talk about the Rhinelander. That's the rabbit that's the cross from the two. Now this rabbit has a really slim body. Its hips are the same width as its shoulders. It kind of resembles that athletic look like the Belgian hare. And it's a little bit smaller than checkered giant. It's right around six to 10 pounds. But what's cool about the Rhinelander is it's got Japanese brindling. It's known for those butterfly uh, patterns on the fur. And Japanese brindling is what we talked about in our previous genetic video in the e-locus. It's got that gene uh, in the extension locus, the Japanese brindling. So these rabbits were really popular in the 1920s, but the checkered giant by the 1930s became more popular and took the lead. But this rabbit has an arched back and it's right around 6 to 10 pounds and it does really well in the heat. Imported in 1924, by John C. Fair and Alfred Zimmerman was the Rex Rabbit. And the Rex Rabbit comes in 16 color variations. And that genetic variation, it comes in short, curly, long, curly. Uh, it's a shorter, velvety fur. And it, it actually occurs in, in dogs, cats, rabbits, horses, rats. It's the number one fur for garments and toys still. Rex rabbits are known for a lighter fur on their feet, so they're, they're prone to sore hocks. But due to that short fur, they don't really do as well. They're not comfortable into the, like a, like a New Zealand will be comfortable down into negative 30 Fahrenheit. Rex rabbits are only comfortable down to negative 10. So you have to take that into account. It's a special fur and they'll do well in the heat. You know, Rex rabbits, New Zealand's, Californians, in most cases they're, they're easy to find. You know, all places are different, but if you can't find Tamic rabbits or, or even um, Havanas or Satins, you know, these rabbits, basically look at the rabbits that they used to develop the Tamic rabbits and they all do well in the heat. But just remember, no matter what rabbit you use, all these rabbits uh, need to have some sort of relief. They need to be in the shade. They need to have, um, because if they go a long time without getting any relief, they, they'll go infertile or you know it makes it really tough or if not impossible for these does to kindle litters. So you gotta keep them comfortable. So just take that into account. You know, computer fans, uh, tiles, frozen bottles, that sort of thing. And we have, I'll put a video up in the corner if you want to see how we put, we hook up our fans. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the link down below if you're interested in our rabbit course. We're putting together a course to make it uh, easy for your rabbitry to make money and pay for itself. And you can get instant access to our Hutch Build book, uh, Hide Box and Nesting Box. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.